What's going on, Pack? Today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about expectations in training. Recently, I have gotten a lot of feedback from some people about their training has been really rough or they feel a little banged up, and that's to be expected. The thing I want to mention to you guys is when you think about training, what do you think about? So the first thing I want to ask and think about this for a second is what is training? Just think a little bit about it, find your definition, um, and describe it to yourself. So what is training to you? And then think about what is perfection, right? And I think there's a disconnect there in what training is and what perfection is for you guys. And that's where it's butting heads. So I consider training is you go into the gym and you have a list of things to do. And the things that you're going to do are there to improve you as an athlete and work on either volume or intensities or skill development or strength pieces to move the needle forward just a little bit. And I think what happens sometimes is we have this larger goal in mind and you let that interfere with your daily progress. So stop for a second and think about how this can hurt you. Because if training or one training day or two training days or three training days, you go in and you train and you feel defeated because you're not closer to your goal by any means, or you get beat up and you get grinded up by a workout or a piece of training that's there to develop you, and you feel terrible about it emotionally. Because you look at it and you go, that's not where it needs to be, I'm too slow, I'm never gonna achieve my goal, this is terrible, I feel terrible. When on the other hand, what I would like people to start doing is thinking about, well, what is training? And why do I go into the gym and train every day? And why do I have to do handstand push-ups? Or why do I have to do ring muscle-ups? And why is the volume the way it is? And that's really where you're gonna get the answers from the long-term goal. That's gonna feed those answers. Well, we have to do handstand push-ups because you've been asked to do 50 strict handstand push-ups in a workout in 2018. You've been asked to do 75 handstand push-ups with 75 dumbbell presses if you're a Masters in the Masters Online Qualifier. You've been asked to do 40 ring muscle-ups with wall balls and rowing and a number of other movements and pairings but we have to build those things so we can attack those workouts. You can't expect to run a marathon every day and PR the marathon. You also can't expect to run that mileage every day. They don't do it. And in CrossFit, for some reason, we get disconnected and we think that, well, if I'm not 100% or I'm not hitting the volume that I need to be hitting or I'm not hitting the speed I need to be hitting, it's it was meant for nothing and I didn't need to do that training that day. Or like I illustrated before, you get down on yourself and you think you're never gonna achieve the thing that you're looking to achieve. So with that thought process, there's a lot of things in there that I've described and what we wanna hone in on is how to approach training, how to psychologically think about training and push out the things that uh, doubt us and don't allow us to express ourselves. So for example, training today, myself personally, I went in and I was gonna do strict weighted ring muscle-ups. I did a few strict muscle-ups and then added some load. I couldn't do the strict ring muscle-up with the load. It's just not something that I have built up yet. So instead of beating myself up, I kept the clock running and I decided to do strict weighted ring pulls and get the rings to my chest as deep as I could or try to turn over if I could. And then I would do two more reps unbroken and build that pulling strength because the issue was pulling myself high enough to get over the top. And so I worked on that and changed the intention for myself in that moment and got a little bit better today. And then I moved on to my second piece where I did an EMOM of uh, kipping pull-ups or chest of bars and double unders and then strict deficit handstand push-ups and double unders with a minute of rest. And my intention there was just to get the volume and the reps and see where I broke down. Now, I understand that because I'm doing five sets, I'm gonna get 35 uh, strict handstand push-ups at a deficit and I'm gonna get 35 kipping chest-to-bar. 
The goal is to build the time under tension, build the speed, and then go right into and transition quickly into the double unders. So I built that into my mindset of how I was gonna approach the workout and the training for me. But I was looking at the total volume, what I was gonna get out of that volume, and where I could maximize things in that piece. And for me, it was actually working on the strict handstand pushups going seven unbroken. Didn't happen every time, but I didn't get upset with myself that I wasn't able to do the seven. So I did as many as I could, which typically was about five or six, and then I had to do either one or two uh, after the, the bigger set. And I would only rest like five seconds and go right back up. And that was a huge win for me. But I set those parameters and standards going into that piece. And I knew what I wanted to achieve and what I wanted to push out and develop. And developing it was really that deficit strict handstand push-up. So all the other stuff I did with the double unders and the kipping pull-ups was all there to fatigue my upper body to allow me to express some fitness under fatigue and accumulate volume of deficits, deficit strict handstand push-ups. And then I did an aerobic piece that was more of a Marcus Philly style thing, but it put me on the bike, uh, the echo bike, and my goal was to keep it at 72 RPMs. And I was doing handstand walks, so I was building some fatigue under handstand walks, farmer's carries, some toes to ring, and sandbag carry. A lot of that was just conditioning, loaded conditioning and aerobic work. And I don't look at that as like trying to win anything. I'm not going fast. Where I win is the fact that I'm out there, I'm doing it. I've got the volume and I'm being intentional with what I'm doing. So when I was handstand walking, I was trying to work on my feet, or overhead, my breathing pattern, how I took the steps, how narrow my hands were, uh, how far I reached with one hand versus my other hand, because sometimes I typically uh, reach with my left hand a little bit more. And like I said, on the bike, I was doing 72 RPMs for the 40 seconds. The toe to ring, I was working on keeping tension in the front swing and not swinging too far in the back. So I didn't get a weird swing on the rings and felt like it was something that could translate really well to my ring muscle ups. And then on the sandbag uh, holds and the farmer's carries, it was just grip and midline work under some breathing. So I worked on my breathing cadence, tried to relax my shoulders and, and get rid of that tension so I could be very relaxed in an, a quote unquote isometric hold and build some aerobic and muscular endurance in those positions. And that was my training for today and that's how I approached it. I feel like I got a lot better today, but I could have easily went into that training session and my first piece not done well in the strict uh, weighted ring muscle ups and beat myself up over it. And if I didn't recover mentally and rolled into the next piece, which is very important for me as strict deficit handstand pushup accumulation volume and practice, I could have ruined that thing, which directly translates to my personal goal, which is doing well in the open and, do, and possibly doing a team or individual quarters or a master's quarter final event, or even just competing outside in the sport of fitness um, outside of the open. So I really need to use that time to focus on it and use my mental energy without coming at it with a negative thought process. Hopefully that example was helpful and it speaks to you guys and gives you an idea of how you can approach your training. But the biggest thing is that I see a lot of people take a training session and it's do or die. This is the training session that defines me and if I don't do well, I should just quit, right? Um, and it's interesting because Meredith Root had a similar post today, which is really cool, and you guys could check that out if you haven't. <clears throat> Might link it, but it's basically she's saying, if it's not perfect, why do it? And people say that all the time. If it's not perfect, why am I even trying it? And I would argue, and she's arguing, that that is the whole point. It's never going to be perfect. Even when you go to compete, whether that's at the CrossFit Games or the highest level for you, those performances also will not be perfect. And if you can learn this pattern and this behavior and this mindset now of stop chasing perfection, start chasing intention, it's going to help you have longevity, achieve the goals you want to achieve, and overall become better as an athlete. So as we move forward, hopefully you guys can start changing your mindset and live in the moment that you're in and figure out how you can achieve the thing that you want to achieve today that is gonna get you closer to tomorrow. And just tomorrow, not the overall goal, because if we focus on the overall goal too much, we really can't control it. 
But what we can control is our effort, intention, and our mindset around the things that we're doing now. So change your mindset around training and understand that it's just to get you better. And there's something in there that'll get you better that day, whether that's aerobic, more endurance, more strength, mobility, just find those pieces that are going to make you ever so slightly better. Hone in on them and try to master them. I guarantee you it's going to make training so much more fun and enjoyable, and it's going to build you to the athlete that you so badly want to be. And that's why you're having the mindset around uh, being perfect and being that athlete every single day, which I think is a high expectation. And I understand why you have it and you should want to kind of have it, but don't let it hurt you. Okay, and keep that on the forefront is, is this mindset hurting me today or am I really uh, using it to my advantage to make myself better? And if it's hurting you, we gotta let it go. If it's not hurting you and you're, you're uh, motivated by it and you thrive on it, great. But I also expect you to pull little things out of each piece of your training each day or your training as a whole each day. And always find those wins because it's very important to find those wins, celebrate them, and understand that you got better at something today and it wasn't a waste of your time. So good luck in training. Change your mindset around it and look at training a different way. This looks pretty good. It's talking to the thing. Perfect. Talk normal. It's picking you up. You can't hear the thing or see it.